Hello, viewers. I'm SB, and welcome back to Space Rack, the, the long-awaited return. I apologize. My uh, health situation has become a little bit more complicated, but uh, wow, that is still very intense. I forgot how intense the music in this area was. Uh, so we are either going to have to get real sneaky real fast or figure out how to have a conversation with this captain. And I mean, it says, it says drinking will help. As you gulp down a random bottle of alcohol from your inventory, you feel self-confidence growing immediately. It's such a weird, like... <laughs> Certainly, alcohol makes some people talk to people who they would not otherwise talk to. You've seen that happen probably in your life. But also, it has a variety of other effects, and it's definitely not just, like, a broad truth. But it is, like, it is so weird how alcohol is restricted to one very, very narrow sliver of its real world function in every video game. And it's always the same sliver. It's like this weird cultural myth about the way that alcohol behaves on absolutely everyone. I don't know, that's not like a problem with the game really necessarily. It's just a, an odd ax I have to grind apparently. Anyway, that worked, that was good enough. Captain, pleasure meeting you. Welcome to Sepikara. I am the captain of this vessel, and my name is Salvo. How do you do? I'm going to try to get a read on this dude. I don't know. I'm assuming the alcohol probably has messed with my perception a little bit, because, again, that's the way alcohol behaves in video games. You have no idea who this man is. Can you trust him? Is he scheming? Who knows? You fail to get any useful read. Okay. Um, should we, like... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be a little strong with him, I think. I know that I've been playing this game uh, in an extremely idiosyncratic way, and I am um, just going to keep doing that. Ah, yes, I suspected you would not be in the mood. And it is completely understandable, so let's not waste time and get right to the reason I invited you here. Yeah, alright, I'm listening. I have a proposal to you. I will immediately release you, your ship, and all of your people. But, I mean, there's got to be a but. Ah, you see, I've lived here among the stars and junk for more than 20 years. I am unbelievably tired of this place, this reality, and would, without any hesitation, exchange this life to simple existence somewhere on Earth. Sorry, you just want a ride? <laughs> yes, but it's not all I want. I think that even on Earth, life without money will be terrible and possibly as depressing as here. To risk my life and everything I've got here. I need a ride and some money. You want the company to pay ransom? Oh, no, 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 no. I don't have false illusions about big companies. Sad smile. I've had my share of experience with them. Okay, what then? Among your passengers, there must be some wealthy and rich people. I want you to convince a couple of them to sponsor me. Give me seed capital if you want. Shit, this sounds like a task for somebody who knows how to talk to people. Alright, um, what happens if I can't? Well, it's a pity then. I mean, I would just proceed as intended originally, as the rest of the crew expects. We would board the ship and claim it for us, break it down, or adapt for our needs. Haven't yet decided. And what about all the people on the ship? Ha, <laughs> here's the irony. We would do nothing worse than what was done to us. Just leave them on some floating garbage. You'd survive, at least some of you, like we did. Okay, this is barbaric. Also, I'm not the one who abandoned you on a bunch of garbage, right? Right? Was it, that wasn't us. I don't think that was us. Indeed. I would go so far as calling it a crime against humanity. But if history is any indication, nobody will care. Okay, alright. I understand. How would this deal work exactly? I would like you to convince these people to spare 100,000 peer coins. Once you have the money, we would then return to your ship together and just fly away. And where's the guarantee that your crew won't just go after us or launch another ion torpedo or something? Well, I've got the captain's keycard that is required for the most important ship functions. For example, movement and, yes, weapons. I would just take it with me. They wouldn't, and they couldn't follow us or fire at us. Eventually, they'd hack the system to change the keycard access, but by then, we'd be out of reach. Okay, I don't really have a choice here, right? That's what's actually happening? Well, admittedly, you are in a tough spot. 
If you wish to keep your ship and safely return to Earth, you don't have any other choices. Unless you wish to be boarded and spend the rest of your life adrift. Honestly, just say, I'll get you your money. And then, if you have the 100,000 for me before time runs out, I'll get you to safety. Okay. Uh, am I gonna try this? Am I gonna try this gamble? How bad do I think it's gonna be if I go for this and he doesn't buy it? And there's really no reason to assume he will buy it. I'm very bad at speech. You know, we're gonna do it because I'm actually quite curious what kinds of consequences this game might have in place for something like this. All right, two is definitely a failure. I cannot deny, we were surprised to see this Proditus here. However, I don't think you've got what it takes to start a fight with us. To risk it. You haven't been surviving in junk space like we have. Your morals aren't as flexible as ours, and unlike you, we are ready to do anything to survive. Somehow I doubt your crew and passengers are on the same level. Ah, but maybe you're underestimating us. I might. This does not change anything. The deal stands. Get me 100,000 peer coins and I get us all out of here. Don't, and we'll see how ready you really are. Okay, well, it's a plan. So, our man here has a key card that, uh, if we were to just simply take it and leave, would disable this ship, right? However, the immediate problem with that is, first of all, we have an armed escort. And secondly, there are three other people on this bridge. Is there any version of this where I might just get everyone to be looking the wrong way? Like, if I step over here, that guy's just looking out the window. This guy can't see us, I think. This guy probably can, though. And the armed guard certainly can. Yeah. What if I, like, step over here, though? I'm, I'm going to see if I can get the armed guard to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to move. See, ideally what would happen is we would get the armed guard to move, but then we would um, end up in a position here. It's calling me undetected. I would think that he should be able to see me, but maybe it's the chair... We're just gonna, we're just gonna see. Okay, general access key card. This is the, this is the one, right? It doesn't matter if he had, if they have access to the, like the torpedo bay. This is the one that prevents them from firing all the stuff. Plasma frog? Okay, it's not a, fr it, it is a gun. It's just got a name. All right, uh, so what if I just like lift that and then we uh, close this uh, and then I unsneakify. I think it's the chair. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna uh, go back to my people now. You probably don't have to accompany me. How the hell? This is not the right hatch is the answer to that question. That's right, the, the hatch we came down initially is outside. There we go. All right, well, I'm just gonna go back to my ship now. Uh, you know, to do as your, your captain commanded. No, not that. Oh, that is interesting though. I hadn't really considered that, but <laughs> you could I wonder, I wonder what kind of tools you would need. You probably need some kind of cutting implement, which we might have. I don't remember if we've seen any like big saws or anything, but like, what if you just took the roof tile, one of the roof tiles in that room off, you just create a localized breach. Nobody in there is wearing a suit. I wonder if that would actually work as a, as a resolution to that problem. Uh, hi, you're, Hey, what's your name? I don't know if that's pronounced George or 
I'm going to be pronouncing it George, and I apologize if this is a thing where this is a common name in like Eastern Europe that is pronounced differently, and I just don't know what I'm doing. Uh, hey, buddy, tell me about yourself. We're going to try laying on the charm here where we're alone with him. Aha! Where our, li our little bonus might kick in. And if that didn't work, I was going to attempt to just like get him drunk or something. Uh, I was a security guard on ED3N before the, the collapse. And afterward, we joined up with the Sepakota crew, and here I am. Uh, we? The, I mean, I mean, you know, many of the security guards from ED3N. After the collapse, Antes emerged as our de facto leader. Ah, what, what's ED3N? Oh, that's a mining area. Eden? Uh, it was, th it was working this nearby asteroid. Scrunda 13. Gross. <laughs> it just, it sounds like a gross asteroid. When, I, I mean, when it all went to shit... Most leftovers took shelter in a few of the recreation areas, but it's a big industrial complex with plenty of space. And so you joined with Sepakota because, well, living on ED3N was not was not great, so we were happy to leave that behind. Really, what was wrong with it? Uh, the thing is, after the end of the corporation, the leftovers sort of ganged up against us, uh, us security guards. They viewed us as part of the corporation, even though we were screwed over just like the rest of them. There's an important lesson here about not serving as the lackey to a uh, greater evil force. It might be useful information for some people in our current society. Uh, so they just turned on you. Uh, while there were a few actual fa uh, few actual acts of violence, they still refused to cooperate and share the resources and drove us out of the better locations. Dirty looks and all that. What, you couldn't fight back? Fight back? Oh, I think you got the wrong impression. We're, I mean, we're, we were not just some kind of, uh, some sort of corporate army. And most of us were miserable, just w uh, wishing for a place to stay, food and water. And sure, Auntie, she, she was adamant about using force, but we were still outnumbered when they took control of the Cambots. Uh, look, basically, when Sepikota arrived, it was perfect timing to get away. How did Se Sepikota end up there anyway? Well, they had different sort of problems. Lack of resources and living space. I mean, as you can see, the ship is just not that big. They were hoping to maybe settle on Eden, but unsurprisingly, our neighbors were completely against it. At this point, the station had an army of robots and an arsenal of self-made weapons, so there was little what we could do. But that did bring us both closer, the Sepakota crew and our small group of guards, I mean. Seems like a strange question, why, why did the space pirates have weapons? Uh, so you created an alliance? Yeah, you could say that. We bonded against the rebels, but since we were lacking power, we decided to leave and look for some other wreck, ship or station, to just settle down. But then you became pirates. Well, we don't really call ourselves pirates, but you do attack and rob ships. We do what we can to survive. I doubt there's one person alive in junk space who can say that he or she has done nothing wrong or regrettable for the sake of survival. Yeah, okay. How did you start attacking ships? Well, when we left Eden, we struggled to find a wreck to live. Uh, there were plenty of free wrecks, but they were inhabitable. Those with life support and supplies, those were already occupied, and nobody was ready to welcome us. And then, one day, running low on supplies and completely desperate, we threatened one of the smaller wrecks. And they... Well, we had the numbers. They didn't like it, but they couldn't do anything about it. We replenished our supplies and made out without causing any violence. So you just kept on doing that. Well, initially we still were trying to find a wreck, but yeah, eventually we realized we can just attack certain locations and keep going. Careful not to take too much, you know, we need them to keep growing and producing in order to sustain us. It's a very, like, long-term pirating strategy. I'm impressed. And ships? There have been attacks on passenger ships from Earth in this area. <laughs> well, that was easy. Uh, there's a certain dislike for any outsider in junk space. Probably envy or blame. I mean, why do they get to live their lives like normal people? And as soon as we saw an outsider ship, it was a no-brainer. We just robbed them blind. So have you considered that part of the reason there have been no attempts to help people in junk space is because you just attack anybody who comes in? Fingers crossed. It's an easy. Ooh, but I really bonked it. Bonked it? That's not a phrase. But... They didn't come for years. Only recently did passenger ships start appearing. If they wanted to help us, they had tons of time to reach out, but they didn't. They don't want to help us. 
Well, now we don't need them. Well, I mean, oof, I'm not going to I'm not going to both sides this issue. I'm just not. Let's change the topic. So this is how our sh our ship ended up in in your sights, correct? Yeah, I'd be lying if I said it was nothing personal. We do hate your guts, you know, for what you have and we don't. Uh, but all right, enough to chit chat. Let's get a move on, shall we? I was hoping to talk this person into being on our side, and despite our bad speech, it almost worked. Now I'm kind of wondering if I can just get him in a fight with the Cambot, though. Hey, buddy, you uh, do you drink? I'm just gonna see here. Well, sure, as much as any other guy, I do enjoy a bit of booze time to time, but we don't get it here often. That's one thing uh, where both Captain and Antis are on the same side. They don't like the crew drinking. Well... So we could try to get him really drunk and just lose him, right? I mean, also, we could just go back to our ship and take off. Where, you know, he probably won't, he won't like that. But he's also very outnumbered. Maybe he just wouldn't try to stop us. Given that at that point, like, he is very clearly the hostage. I'd like to resolve the situation a little bit more than that. Um, I'm assuming this is just going to replay the same charm roll. I have a bottle of booze on me. I don't know if that's going to be enough for this purpose. And since I already drank, I am a little worried that I, I might pass out before he does. Well, let's give it a shot. What the hell? Good news. I have a bottle of booze on me, but I don't want to drink alone. Would you do me the honors and join me for a, a glass or a gulp? I definitely don't have any glasses. He carefully glances around and sighs with relief. Yeah, why not? And then I drugged him. Takes a, a sip from the bottle, and initially there's no reaction. As he goes for the second round, though, his hand seems a bit sluggish, and he mumbles. I don't feel so well. Please don't realize what's happening. Okay, cool. Gonna rifle through your pockets, steal all your key cards. Am I allowed to take... Okay, I, I have enough. I think what I'm gonna do is just stash his weapons in the hatch, like in the vent. So that he's not a threat. And then... Alright, just drop that stuff. Because I, I can't carry both the plasma frogs. Uh, he had a baton of some kind. Where's his baton? It would have the little gun icon. Here it is. I just looked right past it. Alright. I'm assuming that he would not be able to reach these. Can I? Do I have enough? Okay, I have just enough to pick these up. I'm actually going to fix up the used one by using the bad one as components, and then maybe just hold on to it. It's like a deadly frog that shoots out a plasma tongue. Yeah. Let me go, uh, let me go yoink some of his ammo. These are 0.1 each, so okay, we have to be a little careful. That's probably, here, we'll take 10. That's probably enough to resolve any problem we might run into. And then, okay, back over to the captain thing. I actually have to do, I do have to go through this room, right? And the, the vent broke or something. I'm not sure if that is like a thing that happened because it was mechanically supposed to happen or if it's just like a bug, but whatever. We don't, it doesn't, it doesn't make a difference either way. Gosh, I hope I understood this key card thing correctly. All right, back over to my ship. Navigation, home. Then we gotta pull the fuel thing from the Spiritus, because otherwise I can't move our ship. And if I have to drop the plasma frog to do so, you know, whatever, it's fine. Okay. Spiritus docks under, so we use the top hatch. I'm gonna go grab a fuel regulator.
Nope, not too heavy. Everything's fine. What a strange approach this has been to solving all of our problems. But that's like, that's a huge part of what I like about these. Um, I'm, I'm going to say these early CRPGs. Obviously, this is not actually an early CRPG, but it has the same kind of like design ethos, certainly, as early CRPGs, where they just kind of like present you with a big system and they're like, fucking, I don't know, figure it out. Because you do often get to come up with problems where you are a little unsure if this is an option the devs left in for you on purpose or if you're like scooting around the edges of a system. And I actually think that feeling is really valuable. It is kind of cool not to be able to tell if you are playing by the intended rules. All right, oh wait, shoot, I have to go back. Well, sorry, no, I, not here though. I have to go to the back of the ship, but I need to do that via the other, via the elevator. Unless I want to actually spend the effort to drop a bunch of stuff and then manually move aside the cargo things that are blocking the doors there. Uh, and I, I don't, I don't actually care that much. Uh, it was, it was this one, right? This side was the side that had the busted regulator. Yeah. Okay. Uh, congratulations on your totally normal functioning fuel regulator. And then what? I just go up to the helm and hit run away. And in theory, we run away. And are not murdered. In theory. If this doesn't work, obviously I will try to sneak back down to the Spriditis and do some do some shenanigans without our guard. Uh, how do I actually... How would one give a command to go now? Maris. Uh, I'm actually really busy. How does one... Because this is the security data center... There should just be like a captain's thing, right? A captain's terminal that allows for for make it go. Yeah, this is what I want for sure. Uh, and I would expect that it would be up here. This is like a bridge type. Oh, it's this. It's the helm. Yes, the helm. That would do it. Uh, set course for Earth. We have an incoming transmission. Ah, right, right, right. That's just Salmo. Sure. Whatever you say, buddy. Uh, course set to Earth. Departure sequence in process. Yeah, fucking let's gun it. And so the story about a young and inexperienced captain who got their ship hijacked on the very first day had ended. For everyone involved, life moved on. Extreme circumstances require extreme measures. Somehow you ended up leaving the station with a different ship than the one you had arrived on. <laughs> Certainly the case. Losing the ship destroyed all their plans, though. The mother load of fuel was now utterly useless. Despair and depression set in. Yeah, I absolutely did leave everyone here to die. I mean, I, I left them a garbage little shuttle, but that's, that's not going to save very many lives. Uh, even though you managed to deal with pirates, passengers had few uh, had a few quite stressful hours while it was not clear whether they would be stranded in space for good or not. Amidst this uncertainty, for some reason, inaccessible kitchen genuinely scared people. So much that, upon arrival to Earth, one of the first-class passengers sued the company for negligence and eventually won, causing considerable losses. I fixed the elevators, but I didn't go to any effort to resolve this problem. I probably could have uh, avoided this, but also, I don't fucking care. <laughs> that's, not, that's not my money. I don't care what happens to the company. Thankfully, you managed to unlock the rigged elevator, thus avoiding potentially disastrous escalation. However, nobody really noticed your effort. You did not even get a simple thanks from anyone, leaving you somewhat disgruntled. Well, that's a shame. I do like to be gruntled. Uh, Genoa Dilkirk, an old lady in first class, suffered a severe dehydration and was hospitalized upon returning to civilization. Her grandchildren later sued the company for negligence and won. 
What's worse, this is a huge PR issue that haunted the company for long after. Genoa Dilkirk noticed the disappearance of her very valuable jewelry not, uh, not long after returning home. Uh-oh, police started an investigation and it discovered security footage where you were seen actually appropriating the jewelry. Shoot. I should have thought about the fact that there would probably be recordings. Uh, you managed to reach a settlement without conviction. However, your reputation, as well as the company's and your family's reputations, were damaged. Yanis Kapostz, guessing. The man behind the lift sabotage, however, was angered by your actions. Returned to Earth, he tried to sue you and the company for negligence, incompetence, or, you know, whatever would stick. Uh, his efforts were not successful. However, you got dragged to court again and again for years. Happy reception for safe return of the ship quickly turned into shock when people discovered bloody crime had been committed. Police immediately started an investigation and discovered all the evidence points toward you, the ship's captain. Hold on, bloody crime. Did we, did we do bloody crime? I feel like I knocked a bunch of people out and I definitely drugged a few people, but I don't think I, nobody died, right? I mean, all the people on that space station probably died. But none of the people on my ship, I think, died, was arrested, and I'm currently awaiting trial. So, you know, it's an ending. Listen, I did save a huge number of lives. It's just that also uh, there were some other there were some other things. What is what is to happen now? Am I Okay. That is certainly an ending. <laughs> uh what if your captain was a scoundrel who had no regard for consequences beyond the end of the day. Well, it might look a little bit like that. That might be the thing that happens. Um, so obviously there are a lot of different ways that could have gone and, and there are there are different, um, there's a big obvious branching point there, uh, whether you get back to your ship on the Spriditis or on the shuttle you initially brought. Uh, I think this is super cool. This is this is really, really rad. And I actually think this is a format of story that video games are really well suited to. And it would be great if they um, would examine it more often. Something like really, really tight and compact, but with the ability to weave your way through it in tons of different ways. There are way too many games that are that are obsessed with very long stories where due to the reality of development resources, they can only really develop one meaningful way through them and then like maybe tack on a room at the end where there are three different endings and you push a button for each of them. This is a format that takes so much better, um, it takes such better advantage of the medium and the strengths of the medium. Uh, I think this absolutely totally rules. There is so much stuff that was left unexplored Apparently we have seen approximately 9% 9% of the story. And in fact, there are four other main endings. The fact that it's calling pirates board the ship one of the endings is interesting. Gosh, I wonder what that means. Let's um we're going to do at least one more playthrough. I'm going to go ahead and call it here for today. But we're going to do at least one more playthrough where we try things a little bit differently. I for sure, at the very least, want to um, try resolving the first problem by actually helping those uh, the, the Spriditis crew. Or at least not stealing their ship. And then we'll, um, we'll see. I don't exactly know how I want to build the next character. But the way we end up resolving the rest of our problems will probably have a lot to do with what we decide to do at character construction time. Uh, so that's going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. This is incredibly rad, and I hope that I hope that I have convinced some of you to get into it and and try your hand as well. Feel free if you have done some cool, um, some cool weird stuff. If you have had some interesting stories with the game, please do leave that stuff in the comments below. I would love to hear about it. And come back next time, hopefully real soon, for the beginning of the second run. And we'll see you then.